Let's now go to acromancia and its impact on metabolism and its impact on gut health or, or the claims that acromancia is pro-metabolic, if you will, and promotes gut health. I feel these claims to be partially true, although there are a couple of caveats. The data are really early, and in some cases, I feel that the data are ahead of what the science is showing. Huge credit here to our research team for distilling this down in, into a table, and if you're just listening to this, I'll, of course, narrate. But what you're seeing here is a comparative table looking at one trial, so one randomized control trial that administered acromancia plus a few other species like Clostridium butericum. We're going to compare that to a meta-analysis of 15 clinical trials that administered lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend type probiotics. So this is not an apple to apple comparison. It's a meta-analysis versus one clinical trial. Nevertheless, you see equivalent results comparing the probiotics regarding hemoglobin A1C impact. That's the average of your blood sugar over roughly two months. You see superior results with the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend type of probiotic for both fasting glucose and for insulin resistance. So that's blood sugar. Moving on to lipids, weight loss, and leaky gut. Here we can compare one randomized control trial administering acromancia alone, comparing this to lactobacillus and again, bifidobacterium probiotic research, wherein we have two meta-analyses summarizing 51 clinical trials. You see equivalency for impacts on LDL cholesterol. You see better results with the acromancia for triglycerides and for weight loss. And you see better results with the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend probiotics for leaky gut in the sense that there's more data showing that the lacto bifido blend probiotics can improve LPS, a direct marker of leaky gut, can improve zonulin via blood testing and lactose mannitol ratio testing. Taken collectively, interesting to see some of these impacts from acromancia and hopefully further data will reinforce that there's this sort of pro-metabolic effect, at least pertaining to triglycerides and to weight loss. That being said, I should acknowledge that there's something known as a positive publication bias. For new therapeutics, papers tend to get granted access for publication when they're showing a positive finding because it's more interesting. So when a therapeutic is new, there tends to be one or a couple positive studies that first appear in the research journals. And then with more time, you see a better sampling where you'll have some of the null finding or some negative studies. And this is why this comparison is so salient because we're looking at one in both comparison tables here, one randomized control trial compared to 20 to 50 randomized control trials. A real world analogy for this would be if you had a friend who went to a restaurant and this person really loved the restaurant, well, that's one person's perspective. You may or may not agree with your friend's perspective, but if you asked 50 people what they thought of the restaurant, you would get a more accurate representation of what the experience at the restaurant was likely to be because you had a larger sample. So again, interesting, and I would not say by any stretch, this means we're disqualifying acromancia as something to potentially try, but I would be bridled with the claims that represent this as super novel on the gut and this really important, almost ozempic like probiotic due to the impact on GLP-1 and therefore on metabolism. Interesting, but I think we're still a little bit early sort of in this conversation.